So it's nice to uh, be here in uh, Berlin with all with y'all. Um, first, uh, raise of hands. Who here has used Gatsby? Ooh, wow, that's a lot. I guess I don't need to give this talk. <laughs> um, okay, there's a few of you I guess who haven't used Gatsby. So, um, cool. So this talk's going to be a bit about how Gatsby came to use GraphQL and why it's such an awesome fit for uh, what we're trying to do. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be uh, interesting to you if you are a Gatsby user, potential Gatsby user, uh, and also hopefully have some insights to, uh, in, into kind of like what makes GraphQL uh, great technology. That'd be helpful for your kind of day-to-day -day job. Um, wow, it's not changing slides. Cool, I think my computer froze. Oh wait, there it goes. Okay. First, uh, what is Gatsby? Um, Gatsby is what we call a web compiler. Uh, it takes, you know, data uh, pulled in through GraphQL. It takes React components and then compiles the most optimized website possible. Uh, through GraphQL and our plugin uh, ecosystem, you can pull in data from anywhere. Uh, basically, anything that Node.js can reach out to, it can get data into Gatsby. Um, so it makes it trivial to consume data from all different sources in your site and app. And then it takes that and compiles it to uh, static assets, which you can then deploy on a CDN so that your site loads super fast um, without a lot of operations headache. Uh, so you can think of it as like React with superpowers. React is amazing. Um, and we kind of give you a lot more power to go along with it. Uh, so Gatsby is also a commercial open source company. Um, we started as an operating system, or just an open source project in uh, 2015. And then with kind of the growing momentum, and uh, uh, my, me and my co-founder, we saw kind of an opportunity to build a company that provided a lot of great uh, kind of commercial services on top of Gatsby. Um, so we, we kind of like operate through like the open cloud model, where we have open source. Um, functionality, and then we kind of augment that with commercial cloud services. Uh, so there's a lot of cool sites built with Gatsby. Uh, kind of favorite part of my day is looking at Twitter and seeing people you know, uh, tweeting about new stuff that they launched. So uh, some of these you might have been to. Uh, React.js is built on Gatsby. Uh, Flamingo is a really cool e-commerce company, Women's Razors, uh, IDEO, uh, the design a agency, a uh, whole bunch of other sites. There's uh, 575 at the moment. Um, and yeah, so Gatsby uh, does a lot of things. This is one example of what I can do. So here you have a markdown file. And Gatsby can take that and turn it into this, a website. So title is Sweet Pandas Eating Sweets. This is the front page of a blog, and you can see that. And has a neatly formatted date, uh, and then a summary, and an excerpt from the post. And it does that using GraphQL. So each component page in your site can have a query, which can like query any of your data, kind of like a database, and pull in just what it needs to build that page. So this here is you know querying all Markdown remark. Uh, it's pulling in the title, the date, you know, an excerpt, time to read, and the HTML. Um, and through our plugins, you can pull data from, uh, I think it's around 300 different source plugins to date. Uh, anywhere from you know, data on your hard drive to you know, uh, all sorts of different APIs uh, online, like WordPress, Drupal, Contentful, Sanity, uh, uh, databases, Shopify, I mean, the list just goes on and on. And what's cool is that you don't have to like create the GraphQL schema for your data. You get all the benefits of GraphQL, like declarative, you know, data selection, um, data querying, without having to like come up with the schema. What Gatsby does is that it kind of works with the source plugins to automatically create schemas uh, for all your data. So in this case, this is like kind of using like this example. Uh, it's it's uh, Gatsby source file system creates file uh, nodes. Um, for each file that it looks at. And then uh, you also create a type for markdown remark. So any markdown file gets automatically turned into a markdown remark node, uh, which you can also query. Um, yeah, let's take a step back. Well, how did we get here? How did we get to Gatsby and GraphQL? So um, pre, the pre GraphQL era was like kind of Gatsby 0.x. Uh, so when I first started Gatsby, uh, I was thinking React is awesome. It'd be really cool if you build a website with React. 
Uh, it worked basically like any other static site generator. You had kind of like React template uh, uh, pages things. And then you could have markdown files. And then those get run through the markdown template and so forth. Um, so it was pretty simple, but it worked really well. Uh, it fit my needs, you know, fit a lot of people's needs. But it had a lot of limitations. Um, one was like using Webpack. Like Webpack thinks in files, not in like data. So uh, whenever you know, we could add support for more kind of like file types, but there's no way to like pull some of that data. So kind of an easy example is you know a CSV file. It's like say you wanted to build a page from a CSV file, but you could have a CSV file that's like 500 megabytes, and there's no way of saying I just want the first hundred rows you know from the CSV file or whatever. Um, yeah, and also the kind of push model of you have data and you push it through a template, uh, it, it, it's not as flexible. So it's really hard to build kind of like index pages of various sorts that are pulling in data from different, different parts of your, um, uh, different parts of your kind of your data store. Um, yeah, so ideally, you know, we have any, you know, all the data that you have accessible is available for any page when you, uh, need it, and you can just like pull it in. Um, yeah, and so as I was thinking about this problem, and I was thinking about like what a 1.0 would look like, uh, that's when I, I, I kind of really settled on using GraphQL um, to, to kind of drive this, because it solves that problem really neatly, which is like gives you a very nice kind of a query language to uh, pull data out, you know, treat, treat, you know, whatever your data is like a GraphQL, like, like a database. Um, and it has like, you know, GraphQL, which was really nice, uh, and a lot of other things that uh, have proved helpful. Um, and so what I created was a, a system that would kind of, you know, let you build plugins, pull in data, and then, you know, create the, uh, do the automatic type inference, um, and then also do a lot of other niceties, like generating collections and filters uh, that you can query your data through, uh, MongoDB-like querying uh, operators, um, and also a declarative data transform. So these, like, transformer plugins can, like, let you uh, optionally configure or transform your data in different ways. So one is like Gatsby. There's a transformer that does image transformations. And so you can say, OK, I have an image file. And then in GraphQL, you can say, I want an image that's like 400 pixels wide. And then it'll do the transform uh, for you and then return uh, a, uh, a source uh, path for that. So kind of example of this is here, where you know, again, we have markdown file and then uh, query on the right. And uh, this had like a ton of advantages. Um, it solved all the problems that we're seeing with like Webpack and not be able to like pull in just the data that we wanted to. Um, but it was also cool because it made Gatsby really scalable and really fast. Because now we can have like a really big site and each page has a little JSON file now associated with it. Because each page can have a query. And at build time, we run that query for each page. And then that generates a J JSON file. Uh, which then gets loaded kind of on demand uh, in, in, in the runtime. Um, so quick demo of that. Uh, yeah, so here's my blog, or my personal internet domicile. Uh, so yeah, so if you refresh this, um, you can see it's pulling in some JavaScript, and then it pulls in these page data.jsons. And so, uh, yeah. And so, what's cool is that Gatsby automatically figures out which parts, like which which page data to fetch. So it looks at you know which which pages are linked to on a page, um, and then grabs those. So it has like the about page and then the blog. Um, and so when we click on it, because it's already prefetched the data and the code for that page, it like instantly can render. Uh, then. As we scroll down the page, um, it starts to kind of grab these other different things. So again, as you're like cooking around the site, it's like near instantaneous because of that. Okay, um, cool. So we built it, shipped it, worked great. Lots of people who built sites. Uh, but we run into some limitations of how we're using GraphQL uh, in Gatsby. Um, and they, they kind of mostly center around uh, our automatic inference of the schema. 
so one, one of the problems is you start building a site and not all of the content is kind of built out. So you know eventually there's going to be an event page or event type, and it's going to have a field for, you know, is it you know active or not? Can people sign up or something like that? Whatever. Um, but unless you know you have an actual event with that you know field being used, Gatsby has no way of knowing that it should create a field for that. So it's hard to uh, you know build out your components and queries um, because not all of the 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 the, the, the schema will be created. Um, also, like inference can be brittle. It's it's if you ever have conflicting types, we don't really know which one you actually intended. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, kind of like have, have run into this problem. And uh, you know, there's various workarounds, but none of them were very pleasant. And they kind of led to a lot of uh, bugs uh, as people were like changing, like say you're building a website and you're like changing data nearing launch. As the data's changing, like your components keep breaking, their queries keep breaking. So it's a lot, it's a lot of frustration. Um, so kind of an example of uh, this, this, this problem is say we had an authors.json and has two fields, you know, name and birthday. Uh, this would get inferred to name as a string, birthday as a date. Uh, date's a Gatsby specific type. Um, but what if you add a, another uh, record uh, where the birthday is just the string that says unknown? Now all of a sudden, Gatsby has no idea what that type should be. So name is still string, but now birthday is also string. And so any queries you had that you were like form, you know, uh, doing something in particular with a date type will now break. Um, so what we've done is we've added helpers that let you define uh, your types. So now you can just say name is string and birthday is date. And regardless of what the data is, uh, that will be taken care of. Um, and there's a variety of ways of doing that. You can like, you know, explicitly define everything uh, and say just don't infer anything. Uh, and various combinations of that as well. Uh, and this has been great because you know, we're working with a lot of uh, CMSs and other kind of data sources that are building source plugins for Gatsby. And we've been able to roll this out to them and provide much better experiences for their customers using Gatsby and those CMSs together because now they can use like, a known source of truth from the CMS to create the schema on our side. Uh, and that's been working great. And uh, yeah, so this was uh, launched. Uh, month or so ago, 2.2.0. Um, Mikhail Novikov and uh, Stefan uh, kind of led up to work on that. Um, also, shout out to uh, GraphQL Compose, uh, which we've worked really closely with the author to add a lot of functionality, which we've been using to drive uh, this work. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of other ideas of how to improve how Gatsby uses GraphQL. Um, one of which is uh, adding like built-in directives uh, to kind of share various, like to kind of attach transformers to different, uh, you know, parts of your schema. So, you know, Gatsby is really nice because you have Markdown from some source, and we give you a kind of a build time Markdown transformation uh, for that. You know, same thing with images, where you take an image and like do transforms at build time uh, to different things. Um, but if you're pulling in data from uh, GraphQL API, you have an existing GraphQL API. You know, you don't get those transforms, um, and so we want to add uh, directives that you can like annotate your GraphQL API and do those transformations for people. Uh, another thing we're working on is adding first-class support for GraphQL subscriptions, and so uh, in in our kind of commercial cloud service, we have a something called Gatsby Instant Preview, which kind of gives you like real-time updates, so you can have a a staging version of your website that people working, like non-technical people working on the website and the CMS can uh, be looking at. And with GraphQL or Gatsby Preview, um, we do live updates of the staging site. So they can be changing content and see immediately how it's going to look on the, on, on the actual website. Um, and with GraphQL subscription support, we'll be able to like, instantly add that to any GraphQL API. So you can hook up some internal API or some service that gives you an API. As long as there's GraphQL subscriptions, then like preview and plus incremental builds uh, will just work. Um, we're also uh, working hard on kind of scaling our build time GraphQL uh, in, in our cloud product. Um, so if you have a site, and you imagine there's a fairly large site, uh, build times can get kind of slow, largely due to all the GraphQL queries that we're running. 
So if you have 10,000 pages, each one of them has to do a bunch of markdown transformations plus like image transformations. That's just a lot of CPU and I.O. work. Um, and that gets kind of annoying. Like it makes Gatsby not very pleasant to use uh, at a certain size. But uh, this is just computation and uh, reading and writing. And these things are, uh, you can parallelize them fairly easily. And so in our cloud product, we're building a way that you can just uh, put like the Gatsby data store, which is normally like in memory, and like put into a database, which obviously has much higher I/O capacity and can accept multiple connections, and then scale up a CPU through uh, cloud functions. And so you can imagine running 10,000 queries in parallel uh, and doing a lot of you know all the kind of CPU and I/O work. Uh, anyways, so long, long and short of that is that even very large sites, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of queries will be able to build very quickly. So, show that again. Um, yeah, so let me jump to a demo. Um, so, I wanted to like, demo, uh, just kind of show you uh, what, it's, what it's like to use Gatsby with GraphQL. Uh, let me get a little bit bigger. So, this is uh, my pog again. So, if we run Gatsby Develop, then it will start up. And uh, it's like, so here it's like sourcing and transforming nodes. So it's actually reading off the file system, everything, and doing the transformations from Markdown to Remark, or Markdown to HTML. Uh, it runs all the page queries, and then it starts. So if we, uh, yeah, so if we go here, uh, it's, yeah, like so, and then uh, just kind of show you how reloading and stuff. So if we go to blog.js, um, we can say hi Berlin. You know, whatever. Uh, also down here, so every so every component can have a uh, query that's associated with it. So this this is the GraphQL query that's driving this page. And so uh, you add the query here at the bottom, and then it gets injected as uh, the data prop on your uh, into your component. So doing some query of like site metadata, um, and then all the all the blog posts. Um, I don't know what interesting thing can you do. So we could do change the sort, for example, all of a sudden it's backwards. Whatever. Uh, so it's cool, it's like it's all hot reloading. You know, you have your, your you know, everything's there, you can like switch it around, everything's like kind of responding immediately. Um, then if we go over to GraphQL for the site. By the way, who's seen OneGraph's uh new uh GraphQL Explorer? Kinda yeah. It's like Incredibly cool. Uh, we, we recently added it to Gatsby. And uh, yeah, you also should check it out and add it to your work stuff. So what's cool is that you can like explore all the types and uh, construct queries just by clicking around. So if we look at like all file uh, and then nodes, it just shows you, you know, right here all the different uh, fields. So you look at like, access time, base, change time. Uh, pretty size, uh, relative path, size, whatever. It's constructing that, and then you easily run it. Um, it's also cool is that you have access to uh, just like inputs. So you can say filter, um, size greater than uh, 5,000. I don't know. Anyways. Do stuff like that. Um, if we raise this, you know, we look at the markdown. Uh, open that. So on the markdown, so transformers and source plugins, they can like add all sorts of different fields uh, depending on what's interesting. So with markdown, for example, uh, there's a lot of convenient stuff like time to read. You know, you often building a blog, you want to have time to read somewhere in there. Well, now it's just a field on the schema. Uh, then we could add. 
So like, say we're so so anyway. So I mean, just like you're using GraphQL in any other instance, you know, the workflow is you're like, okay, I'm building a new page or screen or whatever, and then you kind of sketch it out. You identify the data you need. Then you go to GraphQL, you get the data, and then uh, build the page. So say we're building kind of a you know kind of an index page of a blog. We just go here. We say, okay, we want time to read. We want an excerpt. Um, we want the slug so we can link to it. And then off the front matter, we want the title. Uh, and then we say tags. And then, I don't know, the number of words, because that sounds cool. And then you run it. And then you're like, OK, that looks right. And then you just copy and paste that over into a component, and off you go. Uh, we're actually. Uh, OneGraph also has a, a kind of a code generator extension to GraphQL. So we're going to be adding that pretty soon. And so you'll be able to just like click on create a page from this query, and then it'll just kind of drop it right into uh, Gatsby, and off you go. Um, let see if there's anything else interesting here. So yeah. Uh, then another site we can look at is we have a uh, so in the, in, in the Gatsby repo, we have a bunch of example sites that kind of like demo how you can do all sorts of different stuff uh, using different sources, uh, different transforms, et cetera. So this is a demo site for uh, Drupal. Um, Drupal has actually a really nice API. And so it's normally considered kind of a full-fledged monolithic CMS, but you can also use it in a headless mode. Uh, and it works. And a lot of people are actually using Gatsby and Drupal together. So this is a site I built a while ago um, from kind of a demo uh, Drupal setup. And so it's a recipe site. And so you have images, or, or you have recipes. You click on one. You can see it, whatever. You can go to like an all recipes page. Uh, yeah. And so just like the other stuff, it has, you know, these are all React components. Uh, each page has its own graphical query, et cetera. Um, one thing that's cool, though, is like I've mentioned a few times that Gatsby does image transformations. So if we uh, if we open up uh, actually um, yeah so if we open up the component for this page here uh, we have you know various things but if we look down here at the GraphQL query you can see that it's grabbing the image here. And then it generates a fluid image with a max width of 470 and a max height of 353. And I don't know why I did it so precisely. But let's say we decided that it's just too big. We actually want a 350 wide image. If we do that, we're like, OK, that's too tall now. So we shrink that down. And it takes a little bit to do image processing. but. Anyways, so kind of very similar way, like you can like kind of hot reload uh, your image data, um, which is super nice. If you're working on kind of like a fast-paced agency, uh, whatever, you know, building stuff for clients, um, you know, design changes are happening constantly. And so Gatsby makes kind of all those data transformations that you have to do for images and other stuff, just a query, you know, just a tweak to your query way. Um, Keel. Okay, so jump back up to uh, thirty thousand feet. Uh, just kind of interesting, you know. Something I think about sometimes is just the changing nature of what we're building. Um, you know, back in the day, life was simple because you had a single monolithic thing, and like that thing was your thing. Uh, you knew that you're building a Rails app or you're building a Node. JS app or whatever, um, but in kind of a world of like microservices and uh, you know lambda functions and uh, you know if you're at a large company maybe there's you're building an application and there's like 20 different backend services that you're consuming and you have no idea who they are that you know maintains these you just like data shows up from somewhere uh, it's very hard to like it's like it's very hard to like, you know kind of conceptualize what is the thing that you're building or what is the thing that you're working on. Um, and uh, Gatsby kind of faces an interesting, you know, a similar problem in that, you know, we're moving from a world of monolithic CMSs to what we call like the content mesh. Um, 
So you know, you know, website ten years ago, it would have you know these sort of things, and all this, all, all the functionality, all the data, etc., would be coming from a CMS. But in today's world, it's very common to be building a website, you know, where data and 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 functionality is coming from a different bunch of different services. And you know, in a similar way, from like monoliths to microservices, it gets kind of confusing because it's like, what is your website? If it's actually kind of you know pulled together from like five or ten or whatever different services, um, and uh, this is kind of where Gatsby comes in, where it works really nice, is kind of unifying that. And uh, uh, actually, yeah, and, and I think actually I want to show, yeah, and this is very and, and this was actually an intentional part of why I chose GraphQL is because. GraphQL started at Facebook as in kind of a similar role, where you know they had dozens, maybe more, hundreds, whatever, backend services. And if you're a product engineer, it's like there's no unifying part of that. And so GraphQL, uh, you know, in its types, provides that kind of central view of what is your application and what are you working on. Um, Fred Brooks. Uh, Back in the 70s, he said, "Show me your code and conceal your data structures, and I shall continue to be mystified. Show me your data structures, and I won't usually need your code. It'll be obvious." Um, yeah, so that's what Gatsby provides for, like, kind of this mesh of different services and data. It kind of gives you a centralized schema that whatever you're doing, wherever you're pulling data from, is kind of a consistent, abstracted view of that. Um, I had an interesting conversation once with someone associated with Datadog, uh, which is a, if you're not familiar with it, it's like a monitoring service. Um, and he said that like, their view of the world was that, you know, kind, of, kind of the same sort of confusion of like, what is going on with all the different services and other things that you're maintaining and building, that the application uh, for people using Datadog heavily is like your dashboards, is like your monitoring. Like, that is where everything kind of becomes a thing. And so you can kind of think of also about like operating systems. It's like, what is your computer? Uh, you know, 30 years ago, your computer was like the chips, and everyone was like very intimately familiar with like every bit of it. But then, the operating system, uh, you know, starting especially with Windows, like DOS and Windows, that became like your computer. Like your computer was Windows, um, and people working in kind of distributed systems. Uh, you know, initially, everyone, everything was like bespoke, and you had to know every bit of thing, you know, every bit of the stack, and it was all kind of, you know, yeah, you just kind of knew everything. But now, with Kubernetes, it's becoming much more systematic, and like you can just say, well, we have a cluster, and we do everything with Kubernetes, and that's kind of the interface for interacting with them. Um, so yeah, in a similar sort of way, uh, with kind of the changing nature of how we build websites, uh, we see Gatsby as sort of your operating system for the content mesh. That you can like take any sort of service that you need for a particular website and just sort of plug it in, and it just works. So just like you know, add a new piece of hardware to your computer, and like Windows recognizes, and off it goes. You can add, you know, like oh, we need search, so we'll just grab Algolia, stick it in, and things work. So thank you for your time. <laughs>